so you can see the steps. What it looks like before, cup sanding, and then this was just a quick 50 grit. We're just gonna be wet sanding to help keep a lot of the dust down. So we'll have more of a mud that we're making. And we're using a sponge just to soak it up as we go along and bring it back out to a five gallon pail. I'm gonna start with 30 grit on my orbital. Sanded the island countertops one time with that big, like, thick, milky, dry concrete residue off. As of right now, it's starting to reveal more of the pebbles and the stones coming through. So I think once we got it sanded nice and flat and smooth, it's going to look really nice. You see all the different colors, the different flecks in here. Kind of rough still, so we got to get that smooth and hope we can only go to 100 or 200 grit and that'll do it for us. I'll bring you guys in for a close-up, but I switched over to a diamond-plated sanding cup. I'll show you here the countertop. We got the milk layer taken off. It's very coarse and rough. I'm trying to get that down with the sanding disc. It was just chewing through the disc. I'm gonna try and just go slow and lightly with the cup, diamond cup standard. That way we can see if we get the concrete nice and smooth, and flat, no rough spot. It'll be rough from the, the sanding, but there won't be the texture of it deep concrete. Let me show you. I'll bring you, I'll give you a close up. See the texture there? Well, that's my issue right now. The countertop is nice and flat, but it's just very rough. There's a lot of pebbles and stones sticking through that are higher than the concrete itself or the cement. So we gotta get that down level and then we can start sanding it. I don't know how good the camera's gonna show it, but it is a lot smoother. It's all kind of down, a little bit lower. We got some sanding marks from the <clears throat> cup, but now we can try to sand those out with a 50 grit disc and see if this is the way we wanna go about grinding down the countertop or not. Now that seems to work pretty good. Let's wipe it up and get the slurry mud mess off and see what we got. It's looking pretty nice. It might still be a little bit too pitted to write on, but it's nice and flat. So that's how we're gonna go at this. We're gonna sand it down the diamond cup and just keep working it. So you can see the steps. What it looks like before, cup sanding, and then this was just a quick 
50 grit. I'm gonna leave some links down below to all the tools that I'm using. I'll link the sanding discs. I'll link the Kawasaki angle grinder. It's a variable speed one. I think it's like 40, 45 bucks on Amazon. And then I'll put a link to one of the sanding cups. So if you guys are doing this project, you know where to get this stuff. two-thirds of the way done with the first sand down getting off the good rough coat and 15 minutes of that hour included me pulling a neighbor out of a ditch I should have brought the camera along but I wanted to get back here as quick as I could to get this finished up today but this is definitely one of those things you're making it worse before you make it better but it's gonna be worth it We got the first heavy, heavy sanding down. Ooh. Ooh. We're gonna put our 50 grid and go from there. Definitely feel a difference just wiping it down. Can you hear that? And then. Looks pretty good. I like it. Still got more work to do, but it's coming out nice. My Gino was complaining the other day about the mess. Told her it could be worse, you could come on to this guy on the couch. All joking aside, it is a pretty messy job. Um, so if you don't want a mess in your house, don't do the pour and place countertops because you gotta sand them down and polish them. But other than that, so far it's been going good. This should be the last time of sanding. We're almost done, they're looking nice. So let's get to it. So we sand them down in the beginning of the video with 50 grit once. I'm gonna go over them again lightly. Put 50 grit again, and then we're gonna start on the 100 grit. I'm just gonna soak the countertops, get them nice and wet. The wetter they are, the less dust they're gonna make. The biggest reason why I had such a mess last time was I used that cupping disc, and on the edges, it's kind of hard to keep the edges wet with the cupping disc. So it made a lot of dust everywhere. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but being a house that's already been finished before, it was pretty bad. But I think it's definitely worth it. If I had an option between doing a cast in place or forming up the countertops and putting them in place afterwards, I would do it that way. But with this countertop being so large, we didn't have the option. I'm still thinking about sealing the countertops with a natural tongue oil. If you guys have any experience with sealing concrete countertops, leave it down below in the description what you would recommend and why. So my thoughts right now is I would definitely would have spent more time vibrating or maybe getting a special mold for the edges. That's where I'm getting the most dust, just trying to sand these smooth and get a nicer texture. And that's what's creating a lot of the dust. Even if it is wet and dries up like that, you get a lot of dust in the house. So yeah, 
Really enjoying the process so far. Standing the edges is a little dusty. concrete countertop was looking like as I was sanding it. I'm almost leaning towards putting a polyurethane or spyurethane on here and getting that nice look. I'll get it all cleaned up. I'm going to have to do a couple of different fresh batches of water and then I'll bring you guys over and show you what it looks like when it's wet. And I'm thinking that's the look we'll get with the spyurethane. It'll help smooth it out a little bit more. It's concrete, so it's nice to give it a nice little finished touch to it. But I almost might try going natural too. I'm not sure yet, but I'm very pleased with the outcome. So as I said before, this was my first try with a concrete countertop, so it's not. I'm no professional by any means. If I can do it, you can do it. Definitely a lot of work involved, it's time consuming. Pouring the concrete is the easy part, I think. Alright, this will be the last wipe down with clean water. I'll wipe it all down and I'll unwrap it and see what it looks like. This is my fourth bucket of clean water. The last one wasn't too bad, just a little foggy basically. Get it nice and wet, show you guys what it looks like wet, and then I'll come back later on and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all dry. If we put like a urethane or a spar thane on it, this is kind of the look we're going to get. Looks really nice. I haven't seen it completely dry yet either, so it might look nice dry too. Maybe we'll do a different technique. But just thought I'd spray it down with an even coat of water. 
So we can all see what it looks like right now. Like the smooth. He likes color. He likes how it looks right now. And then we'll let it dry and we'll see what it looks like then and we'll have to figure out how we wanna how we wanna seal it. We'll have to show mom when she gets home later. We'll have to wet it for her too. Alright, so a couple of imperfections that failed, I guess, would be the edge, especially right here. I tried sanding it up the best I could. You can see where I had to join the two uh, pieces that I formed it up with. You can see that spot there. I could have probably sanded that out and got a little bit nicer, but that would made some nasty dust, so I called that good enough. I'll show you the other side. The other side's around the same issue. I don't know if you can see it, but there's crack, hairline crack, here and here on the edges on the other side also, I'll show you. And I think what that is from is I took these forms down and I think I should have left them up maybe for 24 hours instead of 18 hours like they suggest. You can see it right here. Very minor, no big deal. They're not cracked through the concrete or anything. It's just, I think, settling after I took off the form. So we'll look down the edge. It's not perfectly straight. There's some little wahoos and yahoos there, just like me, a little wahoo and yahoo and every once in a while. Whew, that was a close one. I almost forgot. I almost just died and unpapered it and didn't turn the camera on. This is kind of like opening a Christmas present. Christmas. It's be pretty nice to see how the concrete goes with the blue. All right, I know I keep changing my mind, but this is the look I want the concrete to look like when it's sealed. I don't want to shine, I just want the darker gray. So I'm wondering if a tongue oil would be really good. I want a nice, even, flat look. I don't want it shiny. Like I said, this thing's not perfect. There's a little bit of dips and waves for me grinding out some spots and stuff. And if it's this kind of finish, you don't see it. If it stays wet, you do, and you're gonna see more dust and stuff. And we're just not flashy kind of people. We're more subtle. And we want our countertop to reflect that too. But this is really what I want to go for. I'll have to talk to Gina when she gets home, see what she thinks. I'll show her a couple of different pictures I have, but this right now is my favorite. And we'll see what it looks like when it's all dry. I hope you've enjoyed this series as much as I had in building it. This is what the concrete countertop looks like right now dried, all the water on it is dried out. So this is the third phase of what, a, what you can get for a look out of the concrete. The first one I showed you is still wet, so it's very shiny, and you can achieve that with some sealers. The second one was it being a darker gray, and you can get that with a different kind of sealer. What it looks like right now, you can achieve with some different kind of sealers also. We like the look of it right now. This more of a lighter gray, stone color, I would say. And in order to achieve that, we can't use the tongue oil. We'd have to use a ghost sealer, it's called. Um, I'll leave a link to that below. Well, I'll explain that to you guys in the next video I do when I finally decide what we're gonna seal it with. But we do have to wait the full 28 days for the concrete to cure. So while we're doing that, we're gonna, we have plenty of time to think about what we wanna use for a sealer. I wanted to say thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps. Leave the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you right back here at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.